Turn in your Bible, if you would, to John chapter 12. John chapter 12, the gospel according to John. I'm just going to grab a couple of verses. They're familiar, but the Lord has really been dealing with my spirit all week. And we're going to get into this. I believe by the Spirit of God that the Lord is doing something special in our church. Yes, he is. Amen. I believe all that is happening recently is that we are getting in order. God does not provide blessing without there being order. It's really the concept of the tithing. Tithing is that you tithe because it immediately makes you look at your money and you reorder the rest of it accordingly. That's what tithing really is. It's about you, am I doing things in order properly, and then when we do things in order, then God has benefits. That's why most of us, we learn to drive the car before we got the car. you got to learn the order before you have the freedom. After you learn the order and things are in place, then you have the freedom. I feel like we have one of the finest praise and worship bands on the planet. I mean that from my heart because everyone that, everyone that participates is a worshiper. I love my band. I, I want to choke some of them sometimes. Praise God. Bless the Lord. But they're worshipers. I can deal with a shortcoming as long as I have a worshiper. The Bible talks about a woman that other people said, well, she's a sinner. And he said, yeah, but she's a worshiper. God is more interested in worshipers than he's interested in your sin. Oh, I'm about to get into it today. I'm telling you, I may preach two, just hour, I may preach two hours. I'm, I'm just, I'm not, I, I was told by a very... Um, person that I trust spiritually, we don't need to have an hour and a half time limit on our service. We need to let God be God. If we go home early, we go home early. If we go home late, we go home late. I'm not telling God how to do it. I'm not putting God on a watch. I have a watch because my mama bought me one and it's pretty. I just wear it because I like it. I don't use it to preach by. Amen? Amen. All right. So, John chapter 12 Verse 24, and this scripture is very familiar. But God doesn't show you everything the first time you read a scripture. Right. Verily I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it cannot be made cornbread. No, that's not what it said. <laughs> except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it just abides alone. You can have something, but it can just be alone by itself. I would say a lot of people take Jesus, but they keep it separate from everything else in their life, and it's just alone. But if it die, it brings forth much fruit. Verse 25. He that loveth his life shall lose it. He that hateth his life shall in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. So Jesus is already saying, if you have something but you want it to turn into fruit, it's going to look like it's going to go through a dying process. And if you really want to gain something eternal, you are going to have to lose something that's temporal. Verse 32. Then Jesus says, if I be lifted up, because Jesus is actually talking about his death and his resurrection. He said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men. Everybody say all men. Just because Jesus draws all men doesn't mean that all men accept him. What that means is that all men have the opportunity to they make a decision about Jesus. Jesus told his disciples, who do men say that I am? I'm not responsible 
to make this church a high population church. I'm responsible to make this church a place that lifts up Jesus, not man. That lifts up Jesus, not our agenda. That lifts up Jesus, not our attitude. Somebody say amen. Because if I lift him up, people will make a decision about Jesus. Because Jesus doesn't determine your faithfulness based on the number of people. He determines your faithfulness on the fact that you lift him up. Then verse, um, verse 33. This he said signifying of how his death is going to go. It's going to be death, burial, and resurrection. If I lift up the death, the burial, and the resurrection... He'll draw all men unto him. If I, if, I had to, if I had to kind of title this, I would call it overcoming your dirt. Look at somebody say, you got dirt. We're going to overcome your dirt. Because verse 24 said, except a corner of wheat fall into the ground. Where's the ground? The ground's the dirt. Everybody look at somebody say, you are dirt. You are. Oh, I'm way ahead of myself. Sometimes we hear or we perceive something new, but it's not new to the Lord. It's just new to you. He has appointed times and He has appointed seasons. He has specific words. He has specific things. He has specific people designed for that time and that season. Revelation chapter 2 and chapter 3 said, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit of God says to the churches. God didn't say the same thing to every church. But God does have something to say to the church. It might, be a new, it might be new to you, but it's not new to the Lord. Right. Might be new to you, but it's not new to the Lord. It's revelation. It's revelation to you when it's revealed to you. How many ever felt like, well, I, I really had a revelation about that verse? It wasn't revelation to the Lord. It's revelation to you. Right. He already knew what it meant. He already knew what it said. He knew that there's layers on what you think you already know about. That's why I have trouble with any minister who starts acting like they know it all. Like, I've read through this thing. I'm still asking, God, you got to help me. Lord, I want to stay humble. I want to stay humble before the Almighty God. I'm going to be confident as a pastor of Rock of Ages Church, but I'm going to be humble before the Lord. I refuse to be arrogant. I'm not better than anybody. I need Jesus as much as anybody does. Somebody say amen. Our pastor needs Jesus. But my confidence is not in myself. My confidence is that the Word of God is true. The Spirit of God still works. The blood hasn't lost its power. He still heals. He still delivers. He still sets free. He still changes lives. And if I lift Him up, He'll draw them into Him. Because the Lord knows when it's revealed to you, you have to do something with it. And sometimes you shun die, and sometimes you kill a mosquito, and sometimes you do something else. But too many, too many in their theology say that all of the movements of God are over because the canonization of the Bible is sealed and that the Lord really isn't speaking anything new. That's not true. The Lord is speaking new things. The Lord is speaking new revelation to you, but He wants to know, do you want to know it? Do you want to hear it? Do you want to actually grow in Him, or do you just want to not grow in Him and hopefully go to heaven someday? I think we got a church that wants to grow in the Lord. I think we got a church that wants the Spirit of God. I think we've got a church that wants to see people changed, healed, and delivered. Can somebody say amen? amen? Jesus said, Man will not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Proceed means there's a fresh word. That's why there are seasons in any church you go to that there seems to be a freshness for a certain thing for that time. And then, and, and then there's, it, it's almost like it comes in waves. That is normal. Don't get caught up that a season where you perceive as dryness is not the Lord because not only is Jesus the Jesus that comes out of the grave, He's the Jesus that went dormant in the grave. Even when you think it's dead, he still got something brewing. He still got something stirring. He still put something in order. Amos chapter 8 and verse 5 said, In the last days I will send a famine in the land. It's not a famine of bread or of water, but hearing the words of the Lord. 
Does it seem like nobody wants to hear the word of the Lord? The Lord said, I'll send a famine that they won't want to hear it. Because we still got preachers. Oh, we got preachers. Don't get me started. Some of them, I wouldn't walk across the street. But I have to be careful. I can't be critical. I can't start throwing rocks. I can't start, I can't start becoming the adversary in their life. If you don't enjoy them, don't listen to them. Don't say nothing bad about them. Move on. They don't bless you. They're not for you. Well, brother, their theology's off. You don't have time to go correct everybody you think their theology's off. I guarantee I might find one or two points where you and I disagree. Amen. There may be a famine for hearing, but I don't want us to be a people that's short on listening for the Word of God. There may be other people that won't want to hear the Word of God. I want a church full of people who do want to hear the Word of God. And if the church isn't full, at least everybody in the church wants to hear the Lord. At least they want to see the Spirit of God. At least they want the Lord to stir them. Somebody say, I want the Lord to stir me. And so some people need to quit Bible college and they need to get hooked on phonics. It's what they need. Just read, look, read the Bible. Pray, read, meditate, respond, praise, worship. You'll be amazed what God will show you if you'd read your Bible rather than asking somebody else their opinion. Woo, that's good preaching. Okay. <laughs> My mom's so proud that I worked in hooked on phonics. That was, her, that was her means of helping me. I was dyslexic when I was growing up and couldn't read very good. And she'd, come on, Woody, now let's sound it out. Let's use our phonics. And then I got all upset the first day I saw that phonics was spelled with a PH and not an F. I'm like, Mom, that... Now, this, this is a true story, Adam. I said, Mom, this ought to be an F word. It ought to have an F in front of it. And she was Woody, it starts with a PH. The PH makes the F sound. PH is smarter than just F. I'm like, see, isn't that gracious? Isn't that gracious? Because sometimes you, look, you don't need to use the F word sometimes, y'all. You need some better in your life. You need some PH. You need some higher standard. You need some higher learning. Oh, yeah, I went there. Come on. That's good right there. That's good right there. So Jesus said if, 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 if one seed falls into the ground, it, can, it, it could just be by itself, but if it would actually be planted and die, if it's planted, it could bring forth fruit. You can set it on a shelf, it won't bring forth fruit. But if you put it down into some dirt, it'll bring forth fruit. And then he says, he's talking about this saying, I'll draw all men unto me, signifying his death, his burial, and his resurrection. Jesus is establishing a spiritual principle. That if you'll take a seed and put it in dirt, it'll bring forth fruit. If you take a seed and put it in dirt and water it, something will come out of dirt that wasn't originally in the that wasn't originally in the dirt. Oh, I'm 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 liable just to fall out and hand the mic off to somebody else. Because he said, look, now is the time that the Son of Man will be glorified. His definition of glory, your definition of glory, is two different things. Our definition of glory is fame and big crowds and being noticed. Jesus' definition of glory is going to a cross, submitting your will to the Father, and dying and raising again from the dead, death, burial, and resurrection. I don't need the world's glory, but I sure do want some Jesus' glory. I'll go through the pain and the heartache. Let, him, let me be submitted to Him. Let Him change me. I'll I want a resurrection. I want him to plant something in my dirt and I want something to come up that's productive. If a grain of wheat just sets by itself, it's all alone. Have you ever felt all alone? I have. But if it's planted, it can bring forth fruit. Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw them in unto myself. Jesus is not talking about praise and worship music. Now, we're going to praise him here. We will do praise at this place. Somebody say amen. amen. But Jesus is not talking about praise and worship music. What he's talking about, he said, if you will lift up my death, my burial, and my resurrection, I'll draw men 
and women. It's not that we draw men and women. It's that he draws them. It had to be a God thing, Jason, for God to get you in this church. He had to send me all the way to Tyler to get you here. You don't live two miles. That wasn't me drawing him. It was the Lord putting a connection and a seed in him that got him to a place that he says, I am in this church. I feel comfortable. I feel accepted. God is planting me here. I want to be here. It's God that drew somebody to be here. If you're sitting here today, I promise you, it's God that got you through that door. It's God that showed you how to get here because we're on the backside of nowhere. It's the Lord that put it in your heart to come back again. It's the Lord that keeps bringing you back. We don't have to, look, we don't have to manipulate people because I'm not going to manipulate people. We can invite them, but I want the Lord to draw him. I want his power to draw him. I want his spirit to draw them. Somebody say amen. That's why they're, oh, I'm on, I'm on buckle your seatbelt. It's going to get bumpy. That's why there's such a struggle over the church service styles. Because some people are trying to design it to bring people. Now, I'm thankful. I'm thankful. We, we redecorate and we, we try to keep the words up and we try to be current. We got lights and we got screens, but I want the Spirit of God to draw people. I want people to not to remember that we got a screen and we got... I, I, if you don't like the aesthetics, but you know the Spirit of God is there, you'll keep coming. We're going to try to do our best to look good. We're going to try to do our best to clean up, paint it if we can't fix it, do something. But on the end of the day, I want the Lord to be glorified. I want the Spirit of God to touch people. If you don't like the service, I don't care. If you don't like the aesthetics, I don't care. But you better know that the Spirit of God came in this house and the conviction of the Holy Spirit hit your heart and people repented and people prayed and people changed and people sought the face of God. If we don't get nothing else, we're going to get the Spirit of God. That's why it's not, we, to, there's churches that are designed to try to bring people, but there's other churches we are designed, we're going to be designed to bring Jesus. Because if we lift him up, he'll draw. Not if we lift you up, we lift him up. Not if we lift you up, if we lift him up. If we lift him up, why? Because he's the way maker. He's, he's that strong tower. He's the bridge over troubled water. He's the heavy load bearer. He's the, he's the yoke breaker. He's the one that you say his name and demons tremble. He's the one that he, when you say Jesus, that's how you got saved. He's the Lord of lords. He's still available. He guards and he guides. He delivers the captive. He opened up blind eyes. He, kills, he, he heals lepers. He opens up deaf ears. I praise him because he's worthy. I praise him because he's the king of kings. I praise him because he's the Lord of Lords. I can't explain him, but I can praise him. We don't sing to stir people. We sing to invite the presence of God. Regardless of your musical preference, we're going to have old songs and new songs at this place. Why? Because some of the songs are so old, you'll think they're new. I will flat out drop an old hymn and you'll think it's brand new. You will. It's, it doesn't take much either to impress these kids these days, let me tell you. I mean, all you need, you just need one good old hymn. And they're like, oh, wow, that's a cool song. I've never heard that before. And you just bust out on a tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. Just to take him at his word. Just to rest upon his promise. Just to know. Thus saith the Lord, Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I proved him o'er and o'er. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him. More. Woo! I mean, if that don't get you stirred, you got to quit. Look, if that's not, if that doesn't at least help you stir a little bit, quit letting the devil use you. Seriously. Why? Because we're not singing for you. We don't sing for people. 
The people are here, but we're singing to him. We're, we're clapping, we're dancing, we're shouting, we're jumping, we're praising, we're crying, we're laughing because too many, we're not doing it for people, we're doing it for Him because when we do it for Him, it won't look like something from the earth. It'll look like something that doesn't fit in on the earth. And you can say, well, it don't take all that. Yeah, it does take all that. It takes all that and more. I need to get out of my mind. I need to get out of my emotions. And I just say, I don't care what you think I look like. I got to praise Him because He saved me and He delivered me and He broke me and he put me back together only he can heal me I don't care what you think look some of y'all when I was living for the devil you went to the bar and you didn't care what you look like you may have dressed up but you was hammered halfway into it you dancing on tables dancing on the bar dirty Diana and freaky Freddie you didn't care a bit now all of a sudden you come to church trying to settle down we need to crank it right back up we don't need to be drunk. We don't need to be high. What we need is to be full of the Spirit. Yeah. I'm preaching good today. Too many make the mistake of style for content. It's not how you sing. It's what you sing. I don't just sing every praise and worship song that's on the market. I don't. I make it match the Word. Is there honey in the rock? There is. There's purpose in His plan. There's power in the blood. That's why that song's on the list. There's power in the blood. Where's the healing? In the hands. That's why that song's on the list. You know why he's the reason we can praise? Because he's the Lord of the breakthrough. When you're breaking down, we're going to make sure the words sing about him. We're going to lift him up. Amen? It's not how you sing. It's what you sing. That's why even if you sing off key in the crowd, just sing anyway. My band's loud enough. We won't hear you. I promise. What you are saying to Jesus brings him into the room. It brings him into the service. It says we acknowledge you more than we acknowledge ourselves. He's holy. He's high above everything. If you don't know what else to say when we're praising, say holy, holy, holy. When Jesus fills the room, you are empowered to progress in him. Said a corn of a wheat dies. Jesus said... I'm going to die and be buried like this seed I'm talking to you about. Genesis, it says, Eve, the serpent will try to bruise, kill the seed. Abraham, your seed will be blessed. David, your seed will be the Messiah. Jesus, he's not just saying, I'll bless your kids. He's saying, I'll bless the seed. Wherever the seed goes, that's what I'm going to bless. That's why you can have some people that they're blessed and the person sitting next to them, they're not blessed. Why? Because they accepted the seed. I'm going to accept the seed of Jesus being buried in me and being planted in me. And that's why it says the Lord isn't stopped by, uh, the Lord isn't stopped by your race. The Lord isn't stopped by your gender. He said, I will bless the Jew if he says Jesus is the Messiah. I'll bless the Gentile if he bows his knee and says Jesus is the Messiah. I'll bless male and female if they let Jesus be planted on the inside of them. Why is that important? Because man, all of mankind was made from the soil. Man was made from dirt. You are dirt. Come on. Some of you look in the mirror sometimes and say, I got nothing to offer the Lord. I'm just dirt. And then Jesus says, you're prime material. You are prime property. That's all you are was dirt in the flesh. But Jesus said, I'm going to plant me inside of your dirt, inside of your mistake, inside of your problem, inside of your depression, inside of your bitterness. Jesus said, let me get planted in your dirt and I can outgrow the dirt. He can't outgrow it if he can't get in it. Oh, that's good right there. Derek probably going to have another book now. Out there in the garden watching stuff grow. Why? Because the seed needs the soil. That's why sinners can get saved. Because said, I needed, I needed soil to put the seed in. Because then the seed... 
Once you get the seed in there, do you notice you stop noticing the soil? You don't walk up and say, that's some tomato dirt. That's some okra dirt. <laughs> Nobody says that. Even though it's in dirt, you know what everybody says? Look at them flowers. Look at that tree. Look at them bushes. Look, oh, look what they're growing. They're growing green beans. Nobody says. Look at that dirt. Boy, you got fine looking dirt right here. Oh, wow. Look at that. Oh, wow. There's nothing in this dirt. It's just got nothing. Wow, that's nice. You don't see anybody priming their yard with just dirt. No. Well, they do. They put something in it. And Jesus says, all of your dirt is not unusable. All of you is not unusable. It's just that the enemy made you think you were. The enemy made you think your dirt was worthless. And Jesus is saying, I'm going to use your dirt and I'm going to get the glory because then in a little bit, he's going to outgrow your dirt and then your success and your testimony is not your dirt. Your success and your testimony is that he grew out of the dirt. He grew out of the problem. He grew out of the difficulty. He grew out of what should have killed you. He grew out of what should have kept you and what should have took your mind. He grew out what should have took your family. He grew out of everything that was bad. He said, if you can get me inside, out of your dirt, I can start taking root and I can grab a hold of things and I can start growing outside of your dirt and Jesus wants to outgrow your dirt. Woo, that's good. All right. Everybody look at somebody and say, now it's really been to get tough. Okay. Adam's in the garden. Here comes the serpent. He deceives Eve, deceives Adam. God comes in, curses, curses the serpent to crawl on his belly. And the Bible says that he will eat dirt. He will eat the dust of the ground. You are made from dirt. Serpents eat dirt. You want to get rid of some devils? Stop feeding them dirt. Stop feeding them your dirt. Oh, I'm in it now. Oh, I'm in it. Stop giving him a place to come slither in. Stop, giving, stop feeding him your addiction. Stop feeding him your sin. Stop feeding him your shortcomings. Stop feeding. The Bible said resist the devil. Stop feeding him. He can't heal the pain. He can't give you the joy. He can't make you an overcomer. He can't change your mind. He can't fix your heart. He can't fix your past. Stop feeding the devil. Stop feeding the flesh. Stop feeding the serpent that keeps trying to crawl up on your flesh and say, well, I just can't overcome that. I just can't quit that. Stop feeding that devil and you'll be surprised that that devil will starve. 